Hi, John. It's very glad to have you here today with us. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Yeah. So firstly, could you please tell more about your business? So the Create App business is a do-it-yourself platform for small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, it's predominantly focused on people that don't have an enormous amount of technical skills, but allows them to get online relatively easily and quickly. We've had gentlemen as old as 80 years old uh, take and build an application for themselves in two hours. It's a, it's a very nice business for us in that it has a, a subscription revenue that continues to come in on a month-to-month basis. Uh, and we offer it through white label partners, resellers, and systems integrators, and in, in generally in developed, uh, in developed Asia. Um, the Atos Pay platform is a microtransaction business, so it's a much different way of approaching the market, but it's the appropriate way to approach the market in Indonesia, where the product was developed and is initially targeted. We're going to expand both of those into other uh, regions and geographies, but the payment platform itself is a good way to go into uh, really underserved markets. There's a very uh, large number of mom and pop shops, street food vendors and the like in Southeast Asia generally that eventually are gonna grow into being larger businesses. And I think that there's a great opportunity there going in through the payment methods and point of sale, and that is the approach that we're taking there. Sounds interesting. So I mean, uh, you mentioned the Southeast Asia. So why do you focus on the fintech on this area? Well, fintech in Southeast Asia, I think, is an interesting opportunity. Um, Create App generally and Wayland generally is to focus on uh, mobile commerce and uh, decreasing the amount of frictions in the mobile commerce businesses. Payments in Indonesia, I think, are an interesting opportunity there because you've got 70% of transactions today that are done in a cash basis. Uh, as government and the consumers and the merchants uh, would like to move away from cash, you're seeing people move to uh, mobile and also to financial service products. So those two things together, I think, make an interesting opportunity for us uh, in Southeast Asia. Yes, that sounds good. So what differentiates your approach from others? Sure. Uh, there are certainly a number of large competitors that are in the region. However, what you see is they don't address the same markets that, that we do. We tend to ad address uh, secondary markets and secondary type of customers that are large in volume but uh, are not being addressed. So while you'll see uh, companies such as Alibaba or Tencent who want to go into the region, they generally will acquire companies such as ours after we've developed uh, a footprint. And that is a, a way in which we are differentiating ourselves. But generally, we're trying to keep our cost of acquisition low and uh, have a, a much higher long-term lifetime value by giving products to the customers that are otherwise underserved. Yeah. And what's your outlook for the business and the financial outlook? Uh, we expect the business to continue to grow. The Create App business grew about 30% in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have forward-looking uh, estimates at the moment that are out, but in Q1, we got off to a good start. We had $8 million in revenues in Q1 versus $4.2 million uh, in the year earlier quarter. So we're off to a very good start for the year, and we expect that that will continue. Uh, the Atos Pay platform, uh, which was launched in May of last year, uh, did about $7 million in revenues uh, last year. And we expect that uh, the team, which was only 30 in strength last year, will grow to 100, 150 this year. And we expect commensurate growth uh, there as well. Yeah, that's exciting. So based on the good performance, have you thought about transfer from ODC to NASDAQ? So tell us more about your efforts to list on NASDAQ. Yes, thanks a lot for that question. Uh, yes, we are looking to uplist to NASDAQ. We think that that will attract uh, a different set of investors, but it's also attractive to potential targets. We are looking to acquire companies. So uh, any of our, our forecasts uh, exclude any acquisition targets. But that is something that's attractive for, for uh, potential targets targets as well as partners. Um, we've chosen to list or attempt our listing on the equity standards method, which requires that we have $5 million in owner's equity and $15 million in uh, traded stock, which we quite easily uh, uh, make or support. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other words you want to share with our audience and uh, investors in conclusion? Sure. I think that the opportunities in fintech and in Southeast Asia generally are quite, quite exciting. I think that the number of uh, companies that investors have to choose from are, are quite scarce. Uh, at the same time, you see valuations of companies uh, such as SEA, which is one of the publicly listed options that people have, are approximately 13 times uh, our revenues. 
Um, if you look at companies that are other unicorns and in private investments, you see a 10 or 12 times revenues. Currently, uh, Wayland is trading at approximately one times revenues. We believe that if we continue to execute, that we should see some of that valuation gap close, we would hope, and we think it would be a good opportunity for investors to come along. Great. So it's very glad to hear talking to you, interview you, and uh, we really look forward to actually Wayland successfully list to NASDAQ. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much. Cheers.